The fight for single-payer health care is continuing in the states, at least in Michigan. Uh, there is a soon-to-be-introduced bill uh, that's in the House of Representatives that proposes to create a single-payer health care system. Well, that's great. It would cover dental, mental health, vision, and other physical needs. So now the bill is actually co-signed by about 12 different representatives and was drafted by Democratic floor leader Youssef Rabi, who on Wednesday announced a proposal for my care at a state capitol press conference. Uh, he said in this conference, quote, too many families have gone destitute trying to pay for health care for loved ones. Too many people, frankly, have died. Nothing about that, uh, I'm sorry, he noted about uh, 1,000 people in Michigan die every year because of lack of health care. Now, we know this. Um, this is disastrous. Uh, he also noted the plan would save about $20 billion and would further cut residents' expenses because you wouldn't have to pay co-pays, deductibles, or co-insurance, nothing out of pocket. He also stressed that it's pro-business uh, because it would free the companies from paying health care for employees. Um, in fact, businesses contributed about an average of $5,200 for individuals and over $15,000 for families. That's a lot of money, and a lot of money these companies would save. Uh, and also would add about 3 costs, 3%, uh, sorry, uh, in costs for the state annually. Um, now, the current healthcare system would actually add up to 18%. So that's that's private insurers add up to 18% to customers' collective bills. So you can see, of course, insurance companies are costing us a lot. And not only are they costing us a lot in money, but they're costing a lot in lives. So you have people that are, again, are dying from preventable illnesses, uh, illnesses that weren't caught soon enough because they weren't able to go to a doctor because they didn't have insurance. So now, uh, Robbie also noted that 500,000, almost half a million Michiganders, including 80,000 children, do not have insurance. Uh, and so obviously he wants to do something about this. Now, at the same press conference, he said this, we are already paying way too much out of our pocket to insurance company executives and their profits. Adding that the profit modus of elimination would also address the insurance company's incentive to deny necessary services. Overall, look, uh, the plan, solid, very much needed, but as I'm going to point out, ain't going to go anywhere. Now, remember, this is, this is a system where you have money in politics. You have Republicans and centrist Democrats who get paid by the insurance industry. They get massive amounts of money and legal bribes, I mean campaign contributions, um, and not just from insurance companies, but you have hospital groups, you have highly paid doctors, you have pharmaceutical companies, you have lobbyists. They all despise this. And of course, they use the same talking points that we've talked about before. Oh, they're going to raise your taxes. You're going to raise your taxes. Yeah, you're going to pay a little bit more in taxes. Guess what? You actually save more money because you don't pay insurance premiums. You don't pay co-pays. You don't pay, uh, pay deductibles. And plus, it prevents higher costs down the road. Uh, look, if people have insurance, they see the doctor more often. Right? Uh, now, you might think, wait. If they go to the doctor more often, that, that costs more, right? That's bad. Isn't that bad? No, it's good. Because it's preventative care. Preventative care from regular visits actually helps reduce the likelihood of somebody developing a serious, debilitating, and expensive condition. If you're treating it early and stopping it from getting terrible, then you actually make it so that it's cheaper in the long run so you don't have to, for example, if you, if you stop somebody from developing diabetes through, you know, management and making sure that they go to the doctor and find out, hey, you might be borderline uh, diabetic here. You're going to have to do something about this. Here's, here's your plan. Here's what you do. Here's, you know, maybe medication to help you uh, lose weight or, or whatever, right? That makes sense. You do that and you can avoid having to take insulin, which is incredibly expensive, which by the way, if you do a single payer system and allow them to negotiate prices, uh, Medicare to negotiate prices with pharmaceutical companies, well, then you can actually lower the prices of insulin. 
Uh, but you, you know, you, you, you reduce the likelihood of having to have expensive surgeries, expensive treatments, uh, and, and all of this, uh, these additional costs that are generally borne either by the patient or by our public health system already. Because here's the thing that insurance companies do. Insurance companies regularly like to deny care. Of course they do, right? So now they'll do that along with a couple of other things. They'll make the prices so high for people with these conditions that they'll be you know, forced to pay incredibly expensive premiums that they might not be able to pay for these uh, debilitating conditions that might end up leaving these people disabled. Now, when they're uh, disabled, they get passed along or, uh, okay, so, so they either get uh, disabled, right? Go on social security disability, or they have to, you know, they get bankrupted and they end up being so poor that they have to go into Medicaid. So that's essentially insurance companies handing off the sickest patients over to the public health care system, which is mediocre at best at this point, at this point, but still better than private insurance. And so they're handing these people over because they don't want those expensive patients. They want people who have no pre-existing conditions. They want people that will pay these premiums and never, never file any sort of claim. And if they do, they deny those claims. And so that's how our private insurance system works right now. That's why we have to get rid of it. That's why it ends up costing us more in the long run because you know, this money goes to, it really ends up in insurance company executives' pockets. That's why we have to change it. That's why we have to change it. Now, the people agree. Single payer has actually been getting more popular. In fact, uh, Pew Research found in 2020, 63% of respondents responded favorably to instituting a universal system. That's up from 59% the previous year. Uh, the only problem, of course, is that once again, popular opinion doesn't matter. Because in our system, you have corporate money that has flooded the system, that have influenced politicians, not only at the federal level, but at the state level as well. That's why you had single payer pushes in California and New York that have failed to materialize. That said, Robbie said he would keep pushing for this, um, saying people should not die because they cannot afford their insurance. And 100%, I, I agree with that. And he's not the only one. You have the House Oversight Committee. New news on that. That's now holding a hearing next week on Medicare for All. Awesome. That's the first hearing since 2019. House Democrats, third ever on the issue. Uh, it will be, of course, held by uh, Chair Carolyn Maloney, Representative Cory Bush. At the hearing uh, will also be Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, AOC, and Jamal Bowman, as well as others. They will be discussing Jayapal's bill, as well as focusing on how universal coverage could close the health care gap for people, with, uh, for people of color, low income, poor patients, the LGBTQ community, people with disabilities, and other marginalized groups. So look, on the Senate side, you got Bernie Sanders, who's planning to reintroduce his Medicare for All bill within the coming days. So look, there is a push. There is a push, and it's important to get Medicare for All back in the conversation. I think it should have been in the conversation for some time. I don't think it should have ever left the conversation. Uh, during a pandemic, especially. But it's really, really good, finally, to see progressives start to coalesce and push this issue, not only uh, at the state level with this representative in Michigan, which I think is fantastic, uh, especially e even after the failures that we said, the, the devastating defeats that we had in New York and California, you got progressives that are still pushing for this. And I think it's a good thing. And it's a especially good thing to see this at the federal level. So wonderful, wonderful. I love it. Uh, keep working on it and uh, keep trying to deliver for the people. Um, even if it doesn't pass, you got to keep getting more people on board and more support. There will be a tipping point.
where we actually do get healthcare for every single American.